Someone got in touch recently and said, have you ever taken apart a 125 amp DC circuit breaker? And I thought, well, I haven't. I really should, shouldn't I? So, beside a traditional single module circuit breaker, this is actually quite a bit thicker. It's not as thick as a sort of dual module breaker. And when you set this, it takes a lot of pressure and right at the very end, it really sharply clicks with quite a percussive force. It's quite unpleasant in the fingers. It's quite sore when you actually latch that. And the important thing here is that it's DC as opposed to AC, which is interesting because, let me bring the notepad in. With AC, the if that's this a zero volt line, with AC it's a sine wave, and every time the voltage passes through the zero point, the current drops to zero. With DC, it's always present. Uh, there's always going to be current flowing, so it makes it harder to break that uh, current because it is continuously flowing. There's no sort of uh, zone that it sort of breaks in, in this, as the sine wave has. So I'm expecting uh, a slightly different construction inside this, but there's only one way to find out, and that's to open it up. And then I'll compare it to what would you'd normally find in a standard circuit breaker. I'm thinking initially that it's going to have much uh, wider opening contacts. The other thing I'm interested in is the fact it's 125 amps. I wonder what the solenoid mechanism's like inside, if it has a solenoid. So I'm going to pause momentarily. Am I going to pause momentarily? What drill have I got in my drill here? Is that going to fit? That'll fit. Yeah, let's not pause. Let's just start drilling. Ooh, that, that's uh, promising. And we'll see what's inside. Hopefully not a really huge powerful spring. Okay, that looks pretty good. Ooh, this is where it's going to spring apart anyway, because they always do. It's not really knowing which bit is uh, all the stuff's going to stay in. So what are we seeing? We're seeing, for a start, the coil here is just literally two really thick turns. There's a biometallic strip, uh, and it's relying, by the look of it, just on heat through the actual unit. There's no tap on. Some, some of the biometallic strips there have a tap on them that passes a certain amount of current through the biometallic strip itself and uses a heater, particularly the low current breakers. The mechanism here has a little trip latch. There are two ways for that to fire. I'll zoom down here a little bit. Two ways for that little uh, thing to fire. The first is uh, the solenoid pin here. When the Unit is overloaded. This solenoid plunger here, I don't know if you can really see that, that's very tightly spring-loaded. It fires up and it punches that mechanism. Now that is actually, let's say I try and latch this. Oh, this is going to go so wrong. Oh, I don't think it's going to do it. No, it's not going to do it because uh, it's because it's not mounted together and because the movement is so tiny, uh, I'm not going to be able to latch that. I'm trying to work out where the contacts are in here. I can see the block. Uh, there's also a bit missing here that uh, would be, that's the little indicator flag. Uh, so this is the arc extinguishing block that goes in here. And the idea is that when you... What way does that go in? Yeah, that goes in that way. When the... Uh, circuit opens, as with traditional AC circuit breakers, the arc that continues to flow rides up the copper and it gets extinguished by these sort of plates here and they have to absorb this sort of heat from the arc to break it. And ultimately that's what they're doing here again, but they're actually just doing it over a larger area. Where is the contact? I can see lots of braided connection here. I guess that's the contact there. I'll lift this out so you can actually see it. Looking out for really big springs. Oh, you know, have they tested this? There is actually flash in this. 
you can actually see where it's been. It's drawn an arc. I wonder if they've actually tested it under load. That's interesting. So this contact is uh, the bit that normally makes contact to the uh, the bottom pad here, which is also showing pitting and arc, like really significant. Like it's have they deliberately test this, or is this one someone's returned because something went wrong? But uh, I don't think so. I think they have actually tested it under load. That's quite intriguing that they do that. So uh, I don't know how wide this opens when it actually triggers. I'm trying to actually work that out here. Unfortunately, as with most of these circuit breakers, as soon as you open them, they just fall into lots and lots of little pieces. Hmm. That's not terribly helpful. I'm trying to get a rough idea of how wide that contact goes, and to be honest, I don't think it actually opens that much. It doesn't seem to open any further than a traditional circuit breaker, because uh, something like this would normally open about 5 millimeters, and this one also seems to be the same thing, but uh, you think 125 amps, that's a lot of current. They do then appear to be relying purely on it being drawn up this arc shoot and into the uh, the breaking plates. The quenching plates. That's very odd. This uh, solenoid here also has a powerful spring in it. Quite a really surprisingly powerful spring. I wasn't expecting that. Normally that's quite a loose plunger, but then it is actually probably trying to compensate for the massive current it's rated at. It is going to break at a significant multiplier of the 125 amps it's rated at, so it's going to be hundreds of amps probably to before that solenoid pulls in, the plunger goes up and uh, hits the trip mechanism. But that's strange. I, I was expecting the contacts to be just wider, but they're not. They've effectively got uh, one contact either side with lots of braid. It's a wonder that, that this is maybe why they test them like this. Uh, it's a wonder that braid doesn't actually get in the way of operation. It really is basically sort of folding out from... Where is that attached to? It's uh, spot-welded. The centre of the braid has been spot-welded onto this sort of the windings that are... Well, I say windings, they've been preformed and then placed around that coil. So it's been spot welded in the middle, and then either side has then been spot welded onto the actual uh, two contacts. So it is two completely separate contacts. I wonder if that's why one of them is slightly pitted, um, and the other one isn't. It's like it's done the brunt of the. It's the one that's drawn the arc. Maybe there's an advantage to having two separate uh, contacts in that way as well. So uh, inside, I would say. It's less exciting than I was expecting. I thought it was going to be something radical. I thought there was going to be some amazing wide gap or maybe multiple contacts in series to try and break that. But it does appear just purely to be using a larger quencher and that's it. Which makes me wonder, is it really rated for DC? It's odd. I'm not sure. Maybe you guys have opened other DC breakers. I just would have expected for 125 amps something a bit more than this. But, um... Another thing worth mentioning about this is that it is a cheapy unit from China. So uh, there's no saying it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to perform as desired in a sort of genuine fault situation like solar panels and stuff like that. There's also a little metal plate there. I don't know what that's for. Is that magnetic? It is. Is that a magnetic arc guide? Yes, it is. There's a magnet either side to actually draw the arc in. That is weird. I've never seen that before. This one doesn't have that, does it? Let's uh, zoom back out here. Um, this is just a standard circuit breaker. The quenching mechanism would be... I'm not feeling any magnetism through it. That's strange. Maybe the extra secret to this is the magnets to actually pull the arc in quickly. And that would be quite interesting. That would make it fairly unique and different to the standard units. 
Well, and there's the fine tuner. There's the adjustment for the uh, bimetallic strip. They've got a little uh, screw hole here that you can put a adjustment tool in to fine tune that. Very interesting. So, um, yeah, that's the inside of a 125 amp DC circuit breaker from China, apparently. <laughs>